We could choose from a number of sports sedans, actually. Then, you know, whatever happens to sports sedans in the future, whether they're hybridized, electrified, we've got some really good ones right now. So we've brought the BMW 330i rear-wheel drive, we've got the Genesis G70, and we've got the Alpha Julia. So let's define the things that we're looking for in a sports sedan. Well, it's gotta fit people, obviously, but it's gotta be a balance between really fast, fun, sporty driving and usable, really practical. Maybe you've heard of the blue car syndrome. The concept is you never see blue cars until you buy one, and then all you see is blue cars. When we showed up to get the press cars, all three were blue. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. One of the things about doing this job we do is that we get to drive all these amazing cars and we love it, but they aren't always exactly in the spec that you want. This is the latest generation of the 3 Series, replacing the F80 with this, the G20. It is not the 340, this is the 330i, and it's $59,000. Yes, that's breathtaking. Yes, that's an expensive car. The proportions are there, all the little details, so it's, it's less fussy and more finished. For example, the headlights, the small shape, the trapezoidal shape that breaks up the headlights, this particular shape is repeated as a theme throughout the car. BMW has gone really big with the kidney grills, so look at the trim surrounding that grill it's a twisting surface that comes around, really beautiful surfaces. And by the way, all those flaps open depending on the cooling, and then you come around the back, new taillight shape, but actually, it's kind of a modification of what they did in the 80s. This 3 Series introduces an all new interior for BMW, an all screen world. There's no part of this that is a traditional gauge. It makes it very modern. I don't know that it's going to age very well. BMW has always made excellent seats. They're brilliant, very comfortable, very supportive. We did a piece for TV right after the Alpha Julia came out that was the Quadrifoglio versus the M3. And at the time, we were incredibly surprised with how good the Julia was. Shortly thereafter, we drove this, the base model, and remained impressed. The car that we actually want for this comparison is the Alpha Julia TI Sport, the performance package. That wasn't available, but it still has the same transmission and the same engine. So in a sense, even though it's missing the paddles, which I long for, and the, the LSD, the limited slip differential in the rear, the goodness, the beauty, the passion of driving is still very evident here. That makes this version I'm driving about $45,000. The one you want with those extra pieces added, that's 50 grand. So right at the same level as the Genesis and still cheaper than the BMW. The proportions are nice, striking, especially the front end. The Julia stands out. It just does. This is the simplest interior. I love having these traditional, very readable clocks for the gauges. They've figured out a way to make it visually very pleasing and still really simple. When I first got in the Alpha Julia, I thought the back seats were tight. And now I've gotten in the other two and realized, no, this actually has the most room. Unfortunately, the Alpha has the worst seats. They don't have enough bolster for your thighs to hold you in a lot of these corners. Now Genesis is at the place where it's its own name. This is their first real effort into the BMW 3 Series space. This is the Genesis G70. It's a sister car, actually, to their sister company, Kia, who has the Stinger. Underneath, this is the Stinger platform with three inches taken out of it and no weird hatch in the back. It is traditional sedan with a traditional four doors and trunk. The lines work, the lines wrap, the themes are repeated, even to the interior. Once you start touching all of these buttons, everything's been made to a pretty high standard. It has a very nice ergonomic feel to it. But on a glance, some of it doesn't look like a high-end material. It's interesting to see something that doesn't look as high-end as it actually feels once you touch it. Now, if you're not an automotive journalist, you're not going around touching everything in the car, uh, we're kind of supposed to. It's in the contract. Headliner that you just want to touch. You just want to massage the headliner. I like their combination here of traditional clocks in the instrument panel, plus a really nice integrated digital screen in the middle. There's actually knobs and you understand what they do and then the secondary tertiary buttons are, are well laid out. 
These seats, because of all the adjustment you can make, absolutely compete with the ones in the BMW. I was quite surprised to discover that, but unfortunately, losing those three inches from the Stinger platform has hurt it most in the back seats. If it's little kids, you'll be fine, but adults in the back of the Genesis are gonna struggle the most here. 330i used to mean engine size, it doesn't anymore. This is a two liter turbo, still plenty quick. That's a, that's a big number. I have a heads up display so I can tell exactly how much over the speed limit I'm going at all times. This is the least powerful of the cars here. It's a, just over 250 horsepower, a little bit less than 300 pound-feet of torque. Now for a two liter four cylinder engine, that's a good number. But in this company, it is the least of the three. The initial surge is fast. In the higher RPMs, you think that's really where the power is gonna be and it's gonna push me back in the seat? Not really, it's just the same kind of surge. Because we're now in the lovely world of turbos, this has almost no perceptible turbo lag. You have full torque by 1400 RPM and you maintain it till over 4000. It's just a big cube of torque. Now, having said that, it doesn't progress, it doesn't play with you, it doesn't have anything resembling a personality, it's just adequate power whenever you need it. Five and a half seconds for a zero to 60 is not a slow car, but I'm never thinking, oh wow, this is a lot better than I expected. BMW is not offering a manual transmission. They're not even offering a dual clutch. It's an eight speed and you think, haha, only an automatic now? Did you lose your way? No, no they didn't. The shifts are lightning quick. The power is immediate because of course it has that box for torque. This is by far the best gearbox of all three of these. It is incredibly crisp and very responsive. The paddles feel just right. This Alfa Romeo leaps forward. It feels like it's got a lot more power than the numbers would suggest. And it seems like an entirely different engine size than what's in that BMW. And yet it's just done differently. 280. That's a lot. It doesn't sound like it, and it seems like it wouldn't move, but... Zero to 60 here is right about five seconds, so it's only a half second off that big Genesis. This is still the base model. Now, anything below the Quadrifoglio in the Julia lineup gets this exact same engine and transmission. The only difference is, did you get paddles or not? I'm telling you right now, you want the paddles. You're gonna rethink what you feel automatic transmissions can do, I guarantee you. This thing has a lot of speed. <laughs> There's a number I haven't seen uh, all weekend, brought to you by the Genesis G70. Now, if we wanted to exactly match these other two in drivetrain, of course, we would have gone with the two liter four cylinder. That's also the one that's available with the manual transmission. But then you wind up with a significantly cheaper car. If we're gonna talk $50,000 cars, this is just over $51,000. It has everything you could ever want, and it comes in almost 10 grand cheaper than the BMW. Yeah, it shares parts with other cars in the Hyundai lineup. Yes, you've seen this engine before, twin turbo 365. It doesn't sound like a lot, but I've got a torque meter. There's a lap timer. There's a G meter. What is this car? Is it a luxury car or are we trying to compete in sports car world? Not only is it more than 50% more engine than the other two cars, it is 100 more horsepower and torque than both of them. The power in this car never ceases to surprise me, but at the same time, the ride is the best of all three. They've done a great job, even in this custom sporty mode of making a car that doesn't feel aggressive. It isn't gonna beat you up in corners. Because of sport mode. And you've got customization available. So you can customize the throttle sensitivity, the suspension, and the steering feel. Every time I drive this, I wish to have a setting on the transmission where I could just push it over and say, I'm only in manual mode now. You don't put it in manual mode, you just grab a paddle and a downshift. If I didn't know otherwise, I could be convinced that this car had a dual clutch in it. Yabba dabba do, this is fast. Driving this latest 3 Series, you're very aware of the fact that BMW has been doing this for a while. They may have better and worse generations, but they just have mastered the good driving sports sedan. This is better to drive than the prior generation, and to be honest, it's a larger improvement than I was expecting. 
It feels like a big car, but interestingly, of the three we've brought, it is the lightest car here. 3,300 pounds. You can never go wrong in the engineering department and design department thinking, let's reduce weight to make it a better car dynamically. But there's the least amount of information coming through. Should the 3 Series have it? I think so. There isn't really any information from this steering wheel. It has a BMW heavy weight to it that traditionally meant, hey, it's a hydraulic steering rack and you can feel what the tires are doing. You, you can't tell what the front end is doing. Honestly, I tell more about the rotation of this car from what the rear is telling me. The guys in the command center are making very bold decisions and the folks in the engine room are trying to sort that out. The handling on this is very good. It will dive in, it will impress you, but it doesn't engage you. It's so precise and buttoned down. This car isn't surprising. It just feels like, I've got this. I'm adequate. I've done everything that's expected of me. There's something in here. It's muted. I'd love for that to be more, but for the day and age we're in and for the amount of choice from sport, comfort, eco, and all the kinds of settings that we have, this is an astounding car. One thing that surprised me on this car is I would expect the ride to be better. It just bounces a lot and it's abrupt and there are hard crashes in the suspension. Now, for a sports car, I expect that. For a three series, I'm a little bit surprised, especially when the other two both have really good dynamics and yet have a better ride. I know what the issue here is. It's the run flats. This car is equipped with the Bridgestone run flats and it completely lets it down. If this car had Michelin PS4s on it, that's the sweet spot. All of these Julios of any level have one of the tightest steering racks being sold on any car right now. It's less than 12 to one. Without the limited slip differential, the back end is almost struggling to catch up with how quickly and flighty the front end can be when you ask it to be. And yet still, it almost matches the handling of both those other cars without having the limited slip dip. Neither the BMW or the Genesis really can touch the inputs of this car. And this is the base car. How is this nimbleness fitted to this car? When you drive these three cars back to back to back, if somebody told you to guess which one's the lightest, you'd pick the Julia. We're three to 400 pounds heavier than the BMW. The BMW should feel lighter. It doesn't. This feels far lighter than all of them. I can count on this car settling really well. Corner exit, you're off camber, you've got a bump and you settle and the car just grinds into the asphalt. I'm astounded how well this car hangs on. The brakes on all these Julias are a questionable point. They are brake by wire. When you put your foot on the pedal, you're not actually connected to anything mechanical to the brake pads. You're essentially dealing with an electronic switch. The ability for you to creep in traffic as you normally would with traditional brakes is really hard for this system to figure out. So in traffic, you're going to have a lot of trouble modulating the brakes and you're gonna not like it very much but they work wonderfully when you're going fast. Here on a back road, none of the inputs get it wrong. I can't get over just how fun this car is in the corners. The other two never feel this light and lively. Even though they are specced better for cornering, this is the more fun place to be. The Genesis G70 is the heaviest car here, and honestly, it feels like it. It doesn't feel big, but it doesn't shrink like the Alpha, and it doesn't feel flighty like the BMW. This is on the ground, planted, ready to go to work. This G70 does have a mechanical limited slip differential, and the way this one works is a revelation among these cars. A lot of times, they're invisible. On this car, you can feel it from the apex of a corner. You can put your foot into it, and you can actually feel the differential sort out the power and help throw you around the corner. This differential, combined with the amount of power this engine makes, this car hauls through corners. Again, with the electronics and the choice. When you're dealing with electronic power steering, the steering effort is a fabrication. It's literally a programming choice. And by and large, what that means is people are creating a heavier steering feel when you get into the sportiest modes. But along with that should come more information. In general, that's not the case. It just becomes harder to steer. So I crank it back in steering feel while the rest of the car is as on fire as possible. 
other thing that's a real shock is the quality of the ride. This has the most compliant ride of all of these cars. Even while throwing it through a canyon road, it does everything I want it to do dynamically without beating me up. The Genesis holds on the corners. It, it smashes everything. It smashes your expectation. That sounds kind of trite, but yeah, it, it's as good as you think. You cannot make a bad decision in any of these cars by choosing any one of them. It's almost like we had to drive sports sedans to prove to ourselves and to you that it's not just SUVs for the future. These cars have to remain. I came here thinking this is just another generation. They've just freshened it a bit. That hasn't been the thinking and I've come away really pleasantly surprised. This is a better 3 Series than the prior one, and as an enthusiast, I think you're going to buy a BMW thinking, I'm buying an enthusiast car, and you're going to wind up here and be completely satisfied. You can buy this for less money and get a better driving experience than the other two cars. It's just, the other two cars have a lot more luxury or amenities or tech. Pushing the performance this direction is something really special but I'm not sure everybody's gonna wanna live with it all the time. The Julia feels most like the car for the person who bought a sedan and really wanted a sports car. It's light and it's talkative, and you feel very involved in everything it's doing. I know, Alfa Romeo has a difficult history in this country. There is the discussion that they're just not going to work, that they're just going to break. Well, they're being offered new right now with warranties, and they've made a fantastic sports sedan. I think it's time to give them a shot. The Alfa is probably gonna compete with the BMW on maintenance costs, but here you've got something with a personality. It's a very surprising discovery for Genesis. The combination between the Genesis Coupe and then the alternative luxury at a lower price over here, it's freed them up to design their own car, to do their own thing. The Genesis is the new kid. You, you, they come in and you're not exactly sure how they're gonna do and suddenly you discover they're the prodigy of the class. If you're a German car person and you've always bought a BMW, you might be surprised to hear that you need to look here. All three of these are great at what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All three of them are excellent. You can't go wrong with any of these. I had this sort of preconceived notion towards the 3 Series. After seeing it at the auto show and we sat in it briefly, I thought, probably not gonna like it too much. Okay. I, I don't know if I like it. It's just yet another variation, another iteration. And this car is my favorite. Seriously, that's your number one? In, in a I'm... weird way, and let me explain because Please. This is not, to me, the category that it has to do the, the fast stuff and the track stuff and, and it has to have the best specs in every category. It doesn't. It has to be special. Okay. And for me, the BMW is, is special. I'm Believe me, floored. I'm floored I'm by that I'm gravitating towards this car. Especially, I'm surprised. Especially knowing how you came in. I thought I'd pick the G70. We've heard so many great things about the G70. We'd, it's awesome. It, we'd be done. Yeah. And it is but the G70 is a close second, and this is still really great to drive too. So the Alpha's third. Interesting. I have to rank these cars all the same as far as our ratings are concerned, but I had to give them a one, two, three. Okay, all right, yes. And in that regard, you picked the BMW first. I picked it third because I, I don't like the price, and I do think of these three, while the personality is back for the three series, I like, think it's better than the last three series, mm -hmm. I don't think it has enough personality still for me. So Fair. I had to go with the Genesis first. I think it is the best Despite all Despite how great this drives. I love how this really? drives. Really? If it were me and my money, I'd probably go here, but I think the Genesis is the better all-arounder. I think it does more. Okay. This party trick is how well it drives. It's fantastic to drive. <laughs> okay. The BMW is excellent. I just find it clinical. I, I, it's gotta go third. It's a much better three series hey, than the last one. I'm surprised along with you. I, I thought it would be the Genesis, and then I drive this again and think, Oh yeah. Can you sense our confusion? I can still <laughs> sense our confusion. I hope you will get the chance to drive all these three cars because they're all awesome. We're, we're trying to help, I swear we are. BMW has rediscovered the personality that made the 3 Series so great when it was starting out. The BMW 3 Series is like watching the smartest kid in class get another A. Which is nice, because it's a BMW, but it's not a standout.
If the category were only how well does this car turn in, the Alpha would be first. There's personality and engaging lightness here that reminds me of small sports cars, and yet this is a full-size sports sedan. As much as I have Hyundai love and Genesis love, I want the BMW. This is a better rounded, better value, every bit is fun to drive car. In fact, I think it's better to drive.